Mm -hmm. For some reason, mine is like, 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 like,
folks made their own group. Don't put your own group. Oh yeah, please delete. Okay, they, fi they figured that out um, to delete that group. So, and we've got 10 people not in groups yet. So if you're one of these 10 people, you can't see it if you're not here, but if anyone in class is one of these 10 people, let me know. Um, now we, we're a week short. So at some point I might just make a one other group of, I don't know if they're around. Uh, I'll email the folks and we'll go from there. But if you know any of these people, please reach out to them, okay? Um, but if not, I think I've made groups um, and repositories for you folks. So we should be in pretty good shape there. All right, so uh, back from screen sharing. Yes, we got, that's 32 out of the 42 people put themselves in groups. So bravo, it's not 75%, right? A little more than 75%, it's pretty good. Yeah. All right, and we're, uh, we're wrapping up here. So we have two more weeks worth of new stuff and, and new is not even not tons of new stuff so we'll look at graphics today um, we'll look more at collisions and trying to make it not suck um, the, the pong example i just ran through the, the no no i didn't switch to my laptop <laughs> yeah okay i need some more coffee here oh my goodness where uh, this one here i have two mice i'm confused which one is which how about that yeah but it's it's like blurry. Is it because I have a wide screen and this is like a square? It's awful. Has it always been that awful? I don't think so. Oh, I don't know. Right, that looks worse than usual, I feel like. I feel like now that you've pointed it out. Because it, these projectors are made for like squares or four by three, right? Instead of 12 by nine or what is the that format? I'm bad at this sort of stuff. I don't do hardware. Right? Um if I zoom it in, oh, that's even, okay, that's bad too. So we'll talk more about graphics today. We'll look at images, um, working with images, getting those loaded in. Um, if you want to do images for fun, you're welcome to just do lines and circles. Like it, it doesn't, that's okay. Right? It doesn't have to be amazing. This is just, we learned some stuff in C Sharp and we're going to get a game up and running. Ideally, it's a game you're proud of and you can show people and be like, hey, look, you know, I did this in a semester here, learned a brand new language, worked with a couple folks, and here's a silly little game we can play. And like, you're not embarrassed by it. I think that's the goal. And, and you know, it's not a senior design level class. You're not spending two semesters on this with a big team of people. So like, this is one month of work for four people. So, you know, we'll set some expectations. They don't have to be amazing. I've got some um, projects from last time I was going to try and get running. But they had all sorts of version issues, and I have to spend some more time on it to make sure they actually do run. Uh, it's not as easy as just opening code up from four years ago and hitting run. It's like everything's changed with our .NET versions and things, which is a little sad. Um, but that's okay. So I'm going to work on getting those up and running for you um, so you can get an idea of what's going on there. Um, so we'll spend time with collisions. I know that wasn't working well with the example from last week. Um, again, we just kind of popped it up to look at it, give you an idea of how you could start designing a game, how you could go about it here, and then we'll try and clean it up this week. Um, and the next week, we'll look at a couple other game-related concepts. I'll have some of those demos ready to go for you, so you can see some other games. And, and then, the yep, that's it. So 4.13 is just for you folks to get together with your team and work. Um, ideally, you're done by then. I know that might be a bit of a stretch that's two more weeks from now, but if you can get it done by then, then you don't have anything to worry about for finals week for this class. And that'd be awesome. I don't know how much work you actually got done but last week, aside from getting in the group and picking a game. Um, so I think one game, one team was going to do, was it your uh, balloon is floating up and you have to like navigate the balloon through the different circles and rings and things and like, yeah, and then game over or something like however high you get. Like that's a simple little, just a little platformer. Um, and picking Atari games usually pretty easy. Like Asteroids is always fun. Um, some team wanted to do Tetris, which is a little bit more complex, but there's like a couple examples you can. Yeah, I, I don't want to say use, but like base base your idea off of. Um, so Tetris has the advantage; it's not a platformer. Like nothing else moves other than the piece. So like the, what has to be showing in the screen is not so hard. Rather than where the, with a platformer, like everything is moving. But again, it's not that hard. You just update every object and say show yourself on the screen again. So to deal with that, it's, it's not the worst thing in the world conceptually. Um, yeah, and then I think one team wanted to do Snake. Snake was a lot of fun. Um, you, you go around the screen, you have to pick up, eat little whatevers, and then your snake gets longer, and if you run into yourself, you die. Um, that sort of thing. Uh, I'm trying to think of what other games people wanted to do. I mean, my first part of that 
money, like, like a top one. Like, you know, like, now with, like, kind of top inch, like, third person. Like, your original NES. Yeah. So. Yeah. A little, like, navigate around. Yes. Yeah, so those are fun. Um, does that qualify as a platformer? Yeah, yeah. Not really. No, because that, that's... That's okay. No, that should be a lot of fun, though. Just have a couple rooms. Right? You go, go to this room, find a key or something, you know, attack a monster. Yeah. Doodle jump. Doodle jump.io? This is super fun. All right, how do we play this? You just move the little guy with your mouse. Play. Yeah, and like you have to. Or with your. So he's just always jumping? Yeah, and just the. Well, you've heard of Ben Liz's. Yeah. Oh, a spring. There we go. Yeah, there's like some power up against you up here. So you can't really die, right? Like. Uh, you can fall off. Oh, <laughs> wow. That's This would be a fun one to do. I like that. I was like, like I think Kayla would take this game. I play this song on. Yeah. And this would be easy enough to do like with a controller or a keyboard, mouse and keyboard, right? That's fun. Oh, ouch. <laughs> Man. I assume all you folks grew up with uh, smartphones, but I didn't know you have flip phones like me. Because when was the phone first release? One of, my, one of my kids was asking about this. Yeah, so my my son, my oldest son was born in 2007. Uh, my, my oldest daughter was born in 2001. Um, yeah, so basically, like, smartphones have been around as long as they can remember, at least. And they made some, some comment about, uh, what was it? It made me feel so old. Like, something about some kind of technology, like, in the ancient days. It's like, oh. What was that? <laughs> Is that 2000? I thought it was 2000. Yeah. yeah. The touch. I don't know about. I think it was like 2000. First release. Or some of that. So iPod Touch was 2007. So. Same year as. Yeah, same year as iPhone. Because they had the same technology behind yeah. it. It just didn't have the, the cell signal, right? Basically. Yeah. That was fun. These were neat. Um, I really liked, though, the Zune. You guys ever oh, see the Zune? It was Microsoft I, iPod. Microsoft Zune. Yeah. You know, it's funny um, that there is still, and I know this because I was, I'm, I'm, I'm terminally short on space in my hard drive, so I'm poking around in my app data, program data, and stuff that, you know, there's no going here, you know, but it's like, so I have a lot of that's just the 20 gig in program data, right? Yeah. We programmed it around the Zoom, like whatever, like library or whatever, whatever the heck it's built on, they use the same thing for all of their media players. Okay. So every Windows media player, like room music, like anything that came out that they have on Windows, all does come from nice. the, the Zoom uh, oh, see, software. See, yeah. see the legacy of Zoom. Yeah, this Windurstat tool is amazing for checking out what's on your drive, mm -hmm. uh, for like seeing where all your space is eaten up. Right it's here. so good. Windurstat. I think I've got it installed. Or I had the portable version. I forget. You can just go download it real fast. Windurstat. Come on. So like you get a, a view for all of your... Isn't that what I clicked? Oh, I have to click this one here. Foss Hub. I want an installer. Sure, why not? That's fine. This tool's so good. I thought I had it. We use this on our servers to like it's eating up space. Of course, I accept the terms. Yeah, so like you just pick your drive and it goes through and scans all the folders and tells you percentage wise for each one. That's fun. And there's like a little Pac-Man icon. How cute is that? Mm -hmm. I love when people like it's total nonsense, but like you just put it in for fun, and because you can, if it entertains you, you put it in your program. Like, I know it's it's awesome. So like little Easter eggs or whatever. So I guess this isn't hidden. It's not considered an Easter egg, right? Just a it's a thing. Yeah, Forty-seven gig in program files, thirty twenty-six gig in users, like. 
You know, I can get that done right. I want to bring it up. Check program data, see program data, because I don't know why people who like like mainstream applications nowadays don't get up like the cell by I install Oculus and there's still 40 games on my graph. One and a half data, one and one right there. So a long time ago, everything used to install itself to program files. Mm -hmm. And it turns out if programs have access to write to program files, they can break things. Mm -hmm. So one of the security changes Microsoft did is there's like an auto redirect from when a program wants to write to its location, which is probably in program files where it's installed, it redirects to program data, mm -hmm. which is not supposed to be where your binaries go. It's just data here. So having write access to this folder shouldn't break anything else. Um, so they, it's still a mess and there's still like automatic stuff that happens behind the scenes. And um, so cleaning stuff up here gets difficult too because it's not. If there's like an automatic redirect, I don't know, it's it's weird. Um, all sorts of silly stuff, but 131 gig of, oh, it just keeps growing. There we go. Steam, 74, I have Steam, StarCraft. Standing Stone Games? What is Standing Stone Games? What did I install? Oh, Dungeons and Dragons Online. Okay, I didn't know that was that one. Steam Apps, there we go. Solasta, Skyrim, Among Us, Monster Hunter. Mm -hmm. Yeah, some. All right, but anyway, so this is really cool to see where your your data is going. Um, like you don't have to go through. Hey, Justin, thanks for dropping on by. All right. Anyway, uh, we we got off uh, off track here. Doodle jump. I'm still going. I didn't look yet, right? So this would be a fun little. Uh... Oh, oh oh oh! I didn't know the hat was going to go away. Have to change. Have to change. I'm trying to change my name. It's not working. Oh wait. Okay, I get a backspace. Eric. Yeah. This is the content you need tonight, right? Yeah. Right. Just stay with the green. Stay with the green. If you see blue one, that just means they're blue. I haven't gotten good enough to find blue ones. Do you guys all know about Doodle Jump? Oh no! <laughs> all right. Anyway, so yeah, something just something silly like this would be a fantastic game. Um, so really, anything I think is probably pretty fun. Um, someone even wanted to do like a memory match style game, but they, like they had some other ideas to stuff they wanted to make it more interesting. I was like, that's fun too. Um, you know, it doesn't involve a lot of collisions or anything, but that's okay. It's not too big of a deal. And to be honest, if you have to hand write your own collision logic, you're in for a world of hurt, right? Like no one wants to do. That. That's why we use engines, because all that stuff is done for us, right? And when you take the actual game design classes, people who've done game design, right? Engines do collisions for us, right? Anyone? Okay. okay thank you. Thank you. So I'm not crazy here. Um, that sort of stuff, because you know we don't like to re reinvent the wheel. Because why bother? So let me fire up uh, Visual Studio here. And we'll see if we can't clean up our, our terrible Pong game here. Make this be a little better. So I'm actually going to take the ball image out for now. Ooh, League of Legends on your PC. <laughs> if you don't have League of Legends on your PC, it's as clean as it gets. <laughs> nice. I, I've not yet tried League of Legends. Um, uh, I played WoW a little bit, World of Warcraft. Um, I... I'm a little older than that, so I, I started playing EverQuest, mm -hmm. uh, which was like the first big 3D MMO, like um, and I actually still play that. No, I didn't do RuneScape. Um, I, I played EverQuest for years, and like, and it's still around. I, I still have an account. Um, I log in every now and then. My buddy, um, he got what is it? Uh, bot software, so like you can have multiple accounts, and you can like script it essentially to to follow certain actions. So like you can have your own group of six people. And you just script the other five people to follow your one main character around and do certain actions if your health gets low or if you have monsters engaged. And uh, you just trigger all these macros here. So, like, he does more scripting in EverQuest than he's, like, programmed anything in his life. <laughs> um, and then, apparently, he found a way you can have multiple parties do that all at once, too. So, like, you can do your own raid as a one-person raid. Like, I guess that's entertaining. Um, but I don't know. Um, Feel maybe because he's not a programmer. Uh, he does like supply chain stuff. Ernestin, that's my friend. Thank you so much for donating those subs to the Student Scholarship Fund here at the University of Michigan Airport College of Engineering and Computer Science. 
You are a legend. You are a legend. That is amazing. That's so cool. Thank you. Um, we uh, just keep pumping up the donations to that scholarship fund. That's super cool. Twitch is such a fun little community. Although now I hear there's another platform that people are, are looking at um, because they give a better cut to creators, which is interesting. Basically. I have to like. <laughs> it's a, uh, I was thinking YouTube, right? Got a lot of YouTube. So you still don't get the same. So they don't like subscriptions on YouTube are not like subscriptions. On, I don't know. The whole thing's a little weird. But this was a another platform. But then people are concerned it doesn't have very good content moderation or like chat moderation tools either. So like it's really easy to get hate. Um, I've been very thankful. Um, like no one seems to bother me in the education category. Like <laughs> oh, he's streaming education. Well, it's, <laughs> um, so well, that's been fun. Yeah, but no, the, the uh, neat to see there's going to be innovation. I was sad Mixer they they launched too soon. I feel like they weren't ready. They actually spent some like, like they bought Ninja's contract out and had him go stream over on Mixer, and they couldn't get notifications working because he was such a large channel. Like it just killed their notification system. They couldn't send out a hundred thousand notifications. Be like, hey, this guy's live. Come watch, and it just. So, like, no one knew he was streaming. Like, poor guy. I mean, he got a bunch of money out of the deal anyway, so, and now. Yeah, well, they, they weren't ready. Like, if, I think they could have done it. They were, they were acquiring talent at a pretty good rate, but, like, the platform wasn't, wasn't there yet. Is Ninja really what killed YouTube? I don't think it, he killed it, but, like, that was one of the big issues. They, they bought his contract out, he started streaming on it, like, it just wouldn't hold up. It just, it wasn't there. Um. So that was a shame, but because uh, some competition is good. Some people do Facebook streaming too, or I don't know. There's so many like other live platforms, but, but I feel like that's not for like computer content, no, though, okay. right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I'll just real quick, what's your thoughts on the former YouTube CEO, Susan? Susan yeah. Oh, yeah. She stepped down, right? Yeah. She stepped down. Joe Platt's home saying down with Susan. I haven't really followed what was up with that. I don't know. I think the problem, I didn't mind, but like a lot of those issues were like a lot of like late and bad moderation. Like, not like in a way that failure would catch like really bad fire or so like like super restrictive. So you could even say like the only after the example without being super like, oh, your channel's done until later, you're done. Like, really? It got to the point where I don't know if you do, so I just find it to know about the things I've seen online. It got to the point where if you even say like, even if you act telling sex I even mean to on like a live stream, you just your channel gets demonetized. Really? Bad. Like, like people's you, videos have swearing in them all the time. Oh, I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. If you're not if you're like a smart, you know, person it's freaking martial law, but if you're about that cat because you know, yeah, exactly. yeah. you can let that one slide. Yeah, if you're if you're an important channel, they'll they'll pick and choose what rules apply to you. Um, it, it's a mess. And like anytime platforms get big enough and people are invested that much like it, it's huge and like any sort of auto moderation is, is awful it's minimal and yeah i don't know it's interesting and like you got to have ads to the platform has to make money for it to exist i get that so i don't know i don't know what the right balance is but um, I don't know. Twitch just laid off a bunch of people, though. I was, I was bummed, but um, apparently, it turns out if the big companies all fire like twenty percent of their staff and realize their stuff doesn't blow up, they're like, "Oh wait, we can do this too." <laughs> so um, you know, but the the uh, there's just an article like people are finding there's still tech jobs. It's just the the big companies were a little overstaffed. Um, it seems yeah. like so. Like, what did they say? Eighty percent of people have a job within three months again. Like, it's not. Not that big of it. It's never fun for people to uh, to get laid off, but um, it's not the end of the world usually. All right, uh, so we're going to try and make this be a little better here. So I wanted to take out the image though in my ball class because I think that it worked better when there wasn't an image. I feel like so we'll just stop this whole image thing. Uh, let's see. I can do a lot of this stuff. We'll see how well we can uh, break this. The radius. Then next we have a Y, we should take a radius then, right? Int radius. 
radius. Close the radius. Let's see if we can get this to work. Uh, so we don't need draw. So we'll draw ellipse, right? Here's our look at that. I left that comment out. Awesome. And no image. Draw the ellipse. The fleet's access file won't copy the game. Yeah, game. I think I um I put it in my GitHub repository for this version here. Um, Oh, I broke it. What does it want? Wants a center point, float, float, radius. Oh, and then the brush. That's right, it needs a brush. Okay. Uh, I think I'm probably using one of the wrong overrides. Here we go. So we can do all sorts of different draw ellipse ones that are overridden here. Which one do we want? I think this one, right? Color, float, X, X, Y, radius, radius, color. Okay. X, Y, radius, radius, and then color, color dot, I don't know, uh, blue, what do we have? Color dot, oh, from, okay, here we go, from ARGB, so your alpha and then your RGB codes here, so I think we want 255 for the alpha, and then if we just want black, 255, 255, 255, is that going to do it for us? Uh, oh, yeah, bite. Oh, one more, one more, one more 255. And a comma. Let's get that. All right. Now we can draw the ellipse. Um, so the, the image, we're having trouble with the collision. So we want to focus on collisions first. Then we can come back and look at images after. Because uh, I, I think the image I threw in there was messing up a lot of these collisions when we were working with the ball. Because it just it didn't set something right in there. It was bouncing in all the wrong places. So we'll come back to that for sure. We'll, we'll get it going again. All right, so if we draw an ellipse, and I think that was all there. Do we have more errors? What else do we have here? Oh, we don't need the ball image here. So the radius, uh, we'll say, I don't know, maybe 50 instead of the image. And one more error. This to semicolon. All right, let's see if that one runs here. Couple errors. You can have uh, private keys for signing your programs. So, like, if you're actually going to deploy to the store, you have to sign it with a digital certificate and say, "This is who I am," and, and you're the only one supposed to have access to that. We're not going to bother because we're not actually going to put publish these in the app store. Uh, so, missing keys is fine. Oh, that's too large. That the radius was too big. Okay, so I bring that down a little bit here. So, if we make our ball, uh, how about twenty? For radius, uh, maybe 10 for radius, right? Because that'll be a 20 diameter, 20 pixel diameter. See how that goes for us. Were you satisfied with the overall debugging performance? Yes or no? Yes, it ran. I was very satisfied. Let's see what we get here. All right, okay, that looks a little more reasonable. All right, still having a little bit of trouble with the collisions. We'll see if it looks a little better. Bouncing. Oh, can I get rid of this window? There, I'll slide that over. All right. So the logic's okay. That bounce looks pretty close. Let's see. <laughs> so that was interesting. Interesting. All right. So let's see what's going on with our collisions here. So when we did our colliding here. Here we do. Uh, so collides with left edge. Oh, yeah. So we got to do this check for all of these here with our collide, um, collide. So the ball, if it collides with the left edge. So the left edge of my rectangle, my wall here, right, should be from x0 to x1. So the left edge is going to be the x0 wall. Right, so it hits that left wall. So that didn't seem to work here, but our right edge now should be if the x is at my x1 plus the width. That doesn't seem right. So x1 should be how far it goes, right? So when I make my walls, let's see. So not doing this by hand was a little annoying, I'm sorry. Let's see, so we make some walls. We have a left edge. 
Oh, that's why. So we just did left edge, top edge, bottom edge. The walls just have, is that why we have a width? Where's the width? All width. Oh, okay, so we just said the width was always three every time. So if the x is the same, then we've moved it out three because we said we want the wall to be three pixels wide. So that, that makes sense. So it takes our take our x plus the width and see if we're going to hit that here with your x value, and then your y is in between our y's. So something is not hitting this right here. So let's check out our references here. So we'll see if we collide here. Oh, no, that was the wrong one. Let's go back. Just go back. Uh, so we have the other reference here. So we're going to check here. So if the thing that's collidable collides on the right edge, given the ball's x, plus the ball radius times 2. So the ball's x location should be the far left corner, right? Because we, we have this 0, 0 is the top left. Your, your top left is over here, right? So this is, should be x0, and x1 would be however far to the right it goes. I think adding the radius here is incorrect for us to see if we're colliding on the right edge. So this is the right edge of the ball, not the right edge of the wall. I think I have these backwards. That's what I get for putting a crappy demo together. So we want the ball's left edge position to see if it collides with the wall's right edge position. right? And then to see if we collide on the left edge, now we'd want the right side of the ball here, which would be the ball the x position plus the ball's radius radius times two, right? Because the far left, the radius gets you to the center. We want to get all the way to the other side. We want the whole diameter, right? So the x plus the diameter, which is what we're getting here with the radius times two to see if that now hits. And then where's the where's the y here? Again, the y, um, this is probably not a great collision here. We might want like the center point for our ball. Because we're dealing with circles, and we're not actually doing any circular math here. We're, we're pretending it's a rectangle, which is a little bit bad. Um, it'd be better to do that with circles, but that math is going to be a little harder. Because it's just like fractions of pixels here, and, and square roots of things, and I don't know. That logic seems a little tough. Is that okay if we just pretend it's a rectangle? We could make it be a rectangle. We didn't have to make it be a circle. Like we could use a little square thing to, to bounce around. Um, it wouldn't feel so bad. Uh, so the Y should be okay, but this is like the top of it. We, if we want the center of it, it'd be what Y plus the radius. I think it's probably uh, ball dot radius. It's probably a little bit nicer here to add in that radius for that Y check, right? Because that is, is the center of the ball then going to be centered somewhere between those values. Because otherwise it's the top left and we might miss, you know, hit the top edge of the wall. So let's see if that fixes some of our problems with this now. We'll see what we get. Yeah, I think when we we're using the image, that just got screwed up even more. So let's see. All right, cool. Oh, it was close. It didn't bounce quite as far that time. Oh, yeah, we never fixed the, uh, the bottom bouncing here, did we? We tried to do left and right bounces. Oh, the right bounce was still a little too much, right? Oh, that bounced fine. Interesting. Yeah, still going too far to the left. All right, so let's do, put a breakpoint in here and see when we collide on this left edge, what we're getting here. Ooh, change color randomly. Did we do that? I forgot. Oh, okay, we're supposed to use the color property. That's what we want here. Ball has a color property that changes. So when we draw the ball, we'll just use, instead of white here, let's use color. There we go. And it can use a random value. That'll be much prettier. But we'll put it in, in debug mode, and let's see what those values are when we get here, why it's not bouncing quite right. Should be able to get it to break on debug here.
Oh, the ball's really hard to see now. So it's really dark there. There it goes. It's changing randomly. So this should be when it hits the left side. We told it to, to break. Oh. Oh, no. Oh, it collides the left edge of this wall. Okay. So at this point... Oh, come on. Come back, program. You won't, you won't even let me see it. So the collidable here is our wall. The wall's x value is 790 here, because that was the, the right edge of the screen, right? 700, 790 pixels over to the right was our x's here. So then our ball x is at 770. The radius is 10 times 2 is 20. So ball 770 plus radius times 2. That sounds right. But it looks like it wasn't actually hitting though, right? And then we're going to change colors here. We'll say we bounced. Um, traveling leftward. We flipped that one. Okay. Sure. So can we continue? Oh, oh, oh. oh. No, I, I think I'm. Oh, there it goes. I was holding it down when I like paused and it like broke the. Key. So that was definitely not a bounce on the left. It was hitting a bounce on the right. I think we're off on where the ball is. If the X was 770. So we draw the ball. Draw ellipse. X, Y, radius, radius, yeah. And here's the color. Let's see. Can we... Let's do this. Let's uh, have this going in here. When we go and update, let's take our. Where's it here? I want it to draw. Oh, here, in our draw game. That's what we want to do. So, update is for our game logic here. So, in draw, let's see if we can't draw something else here. Take our canvas. Dot and this stuff. You can draw some text here. So what, what text do we want? So we'll say ball x. We'll do this little interpolated string here. Start. We have ball dot x. Nope. What's my attribute called? Oh, lowercase b ball. Goodness. Ball dot x. Ball dot y. X and Y. I know I posted a meme making fun of people for, uh, oh, and the color too. Oh, and where we want to put this. So the point here, I don't want the point. Can I just give it an X and a Y? Yeah, an X and a Y. So let's put this near the bottom of the screen. So probably like 450 and then 800. Should be below the, the lowest level here, I think. Um, and then a color. color dot, what is it? Color stop. Wait. There we go. You give it a little color. We should be able to see the values of the ball x and y. I, and I posted that me making fun of people for debugging with like putting in more print statements. And I'm essentially doing that. And I feel a little bad here, but we want to see what it, what it looks like. Let's see what we get. The Canvas class predefined, yeah, the Canvas class came with the um, Win2D package that we used. There it goes. Okay, so it had to bounce first. Where's my text? Is it not? I'm not seeing it. Well, that's unfortunate. Definitely didn't look like it hit the wall there. X of 770. Maybe if we just do the radius. So what do we what do we draw? I think we're drawing it wrong. Is that what I'm doing? Am I drawing it wrong? We draw the ellipse. We're giving it the radius for x and radius for y. That should be fine because that says radius, but I think we're going off too far. 
Why is my draw text not going? Draw text. Um, maybe white's no good for the color? No, that should be fine, right? F, 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 F. Canvas draw text. What if the location's no good here? For X and Y. Should be fine. Let's try 100, 100, just to see if we can get the show somewhere on the screen. See what we can get. There it goes. Okay. So it was probably off the screen. It was probably too far wherever we had it before. So let's see if our bouncer looks any better now. Okay, that looks like a proper collision now. So I think maybe multiplying the radius was not actually, so what is drawing the radius must not have actually been the radius. It must have been like the diameter. And it's just named weirdly, I guess. Because that seems like that one hits now, right? So when we travel on the... Uh, to hit the right edge, it'd be, no, this is not, oh no, ball X, are we hitting, collides on the right edge, no, 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 go to implementation, or wall, okay, so if the X1, close this, close that, if the X1 plus the width, equals the x that we were given, and the y matches. So the, the collide on the right edge, that should be the left edge, but it must not be. I know what I did, I'm, I'm dumb. So it is printing the radius here. So the x and the y are not the top left, not a rectangle. If this is the radius value, the x and the y are at the center, right? That's my problem. So we need x minus the radius. Does that make sense? I think that solves all of our problems here. So we want collides with our right edge is the ball minus ball dot radius. To collide on the left edge is ball plus ball radius. So then this should be what half of radius then to find those centers, right? If we're, if we're trying to find like where the center of the ball was. Or really, no, that should just be ball y then, right? We don't even have to do any of that. So ball y is the center. That makes life easy here. And then for the top edge, then, it'd be our x just plus the radius. And for the bottom edge, it'd be the ball minus the ball dot radius. Okay, that might solve all of our problems here. What do you think? Can we try it? And then should we put our text somewhere a little else? Somewhere else? Um, but 100, maybe 200, 200? Where does that put it? This game, there's no drag and drop, which is kind of unfortunate because we're drawing on a canvas. There's no, like, I can't put a text property here and update the text. Um, maybe we could instead of just a blank canvas, but we're just using that draw method. So 200, 200 is good. So maybe. 300, 300. Oh, yeah. Is it? Oh, I broke it, I think. Stop running. I don't know what it did. That's fun. Select an element. No. That's weird. Okay, probably hitting it on the side was no good. Anyway, 300 and then maybe 600? Let's see what we get. We'll try not to break it this time. There it is. Okay, so that's way far down. Yes, when I had 800 before, it was going to be super far down. 
All right, that collision looked good. That one, okay, we had a breakpoint. That one looked pretty good. We'll continue. That one looked pretty good. We might have solved it. So learning how ellipse actually works would be useful. Yeah, that's hard when it gets uh, really dark. All right, awesome. So it seems to be working so far. Right. I think we fixed some of those collision issues um, by figuring out what actually worked here the hard way. But that makes sense so far? Okay, cool. Now, when we're dealing with different speeds, it gets difficult. right? Because if we're not moving one pixel at a time, then these collisions aren't necessarily going to be equals ever. So if the ball is moving two or three or four or five pixels at a time, I'm never, I might not exactly match that wall location, right? So we need to take into account it's where it's going in the next tick. Because ideally, you don't want it to be shown inside the wall and then have a bounce, right? You kind of want it to say it's about to hit the wall, let's have a bounce. Um, and it's going to get a little jarring because we can't split that. I want to get half of a, an update done where it moves exactly to where it hits the wall and the bounces off. So if we're moving too fast, we're just not going to be able to see it here. But we should be able to go and add a speed here for our ball. So we'll have we'll add a public property int, I don't know, speed. Get the set. And then we'll make the constructor say, hey, our speed is 1 to start. And then when we update here, we'll add the speed. For speed, and speed, and speed. Uh, why speed one? Oh, I probably just typed that wrong. So now we'll move the given speed. So if we want to be able to change the speed value, we can go and add an option to do that. So let's go have in our Pong game, we can add a method for change speed. Void, I don't know, increase ball speed. And we'll take the ball.speed plus plus. And I'm going to make a decrease ball speed. Now I'll take speed minus minus. Right? So then in our XAML page, we need a way to connect the input to the game. Right? This idea, all the game logic happens separate in its own classes. We just need, here's the input, tells the game what to do, and here's how we display it. Um, so we're going to add in key events here. So we already have these binds on a key down and key up in the entire window. So it doesn't matter what's in focus in the window, the entire window is just going to listen for these key up, key down events. And when it's a key down, if it's left, we'll set travel left. When it's right, we'll set travel right. On key up, so this way you can hold the left and you can hold the right. So I don't really care for holding the key down. I just like, if we press the key, I want it to increase the speed. Right, so what uh, what's a good um, keys for increasing the speed? What should we have? Let me just add it in here. So else if my e dot virtual key is equal to Windows system virtual key dot which key do you want? The up arrow. Okay, uh, so that's the up. So up should increase the speed then. We'll take my game then. So pong dot increase ball speed. And then the down arrow. If it's dot down, we'll decrease ball speed. Okay? And then it doesn't really matter when we let go of the key. So as soon as we push it down, it's gonna happen. We're not gonna hold on to the key or anything like that. It's not a on-off trigger that we're doing. So just when I press the key, it'll trigger a down and an up event. We're only going to do it on the down event. We could do it on the up. It really probably doesn't matter one way or the other here because um, you're not going to hold down the key. So now we should be able to change the speed of the ball. Did I skip over the, the Win2D package when I showed the demo last week? You said yes or no? I'm sorry. Yeah, I'm okay. All right. Once I, once I lose, we'll do that here. All right. So let's increase the speed. There's two. It's going two pixels at a time. One pixel at a time. Zero pixels at a time. 
negative one pixels at a time. Right? We can reverse the ball by going negative speed. And the collision logic works, actually. That's kind of cool. Oh, that one didn't. Let's go negative. Uh, the ball's gone. It stopped updating. I don't know even what happened. Like it just totally stopped, froze over here. Um, that was probably no good. So again, and our collisions weren't made to handle that, right? Uh, so let me tell you. So the package here to get all this animated canvas stuff is in NuGet. So you go to Tools, the NuGet Package Manager, like we did for our um, database project, and there is Win2D.uwp. This is Windows 2D for Universal Windows Platform. It gives you a Windows Runtime API for immediate mode 2D graphics rendering for the Universal Windows platform. This is what we're taking advantage of. So what this package does is talk, talk to DirectX, I think. I think that's what this one does, Win2D. Let's double check, Win2D. I think we can even see, uh, where's, the, where's the notes on it? Come on, Win2D. Uh, EWP, if you can't find it. Oh, there's some details. Yeah, here it is, project URL. Two packages. This one here. Yeah, Direct2D. So integrates with Direct. So we don't have to do any of this DirectX stuff by hand, Direct2D or Direct3D. Um, you can do this stuff by hand and import the direct packages themselves. That's a real pain, uh, unless you really like math. Um, that's okay. It's the uh, drawing of things and the physics and the uh, like angles and curves and things that always hurt my head. Um, I'm much happier to have a package that tells me how to draw a circle than me to have to figure that out myself. Uh, but it, that, again, that's that's my lazy approach. And you can do more if you use the base tools, right? You, we're only we're limited to what the library gives us if we're using the library. Um, but, and this uses the canvas here as an animated canvas. So it kind of gives you the example of this is what we're going to do in this draw function here. Uh, you can do it in C++ too if you like, uh, but I, I wouldn't recommend it. C Sharp so much cooler. Uh, or even VB, wow, that's, wow. Um, so in our canvas then, We set up a draw method using the canvas animated control and the canvas animated draw events. So one of those that you get here in the animated draw event args is the drawing session. The drawing session is what we've been drawing on. When we say canvas.draw, having access to that lets you draw something on the screen when this event is called the canvas draw. And the canvas update is the update logic. So it calls update and then it calls draw. Calls update, calls draw in our XAML itself. So in the XAML, we say, hey, I want the canvas, canvas animated control here. This is the draw event. This is the update event. And then we can create resources as well. This uh, kind of loads things behind the scenes for us. Create resources. It's so a funky thing here because you have to do it asynchronously. It's a whole mess here. This is how you load images. Uh, it's a bit of this async process. Um, but it's okay. Um, it works relatively well. You just say, hey, I want to load what? And you, you put it in an assets folder and you can load stuff in here so that we added the ball icon so you can go load it up. Um, we didn't actually use the ball image now, but that's okay. Um, should be fine. All right, that was the, the library. Thank you. I, sorry, I forgot to, to show that last week. So if you opened this project, it should have just worked because it's a NuGet package. When you hit build, anything that's in NuGet gets downloaded for you. That's the beauty of that. It just is defined in your project, and I think we can even look at it here. Let's see. Um, it was our Xbox test. No, that wasn't it. It was XAML animated canvas pong. So in the project file, here, the CS project file, looks like a bunch of nonsense in here, right? A bunch of other things happening. But one of the things you get in here is the information about what hey, I want to use the Win2D package. So that information is just put into the project file itself. 
So when you go open up this project, it says, oh, hey, you want to reference this package. And it will go and download it for you when you go build if it doesn't exist. If you already have it downloaded, right, it'll use it off your local version here. Um, and you can specify a specific version. So the, the build process does a lot of this stuff for us. And that's the same with the database project. One of your teammates had to run the, the scaffold command to build the classes, but that's it. Not everyone has to go run that. It just needs the package there from NuGet. You go download it and it should work for you. So, all right, yeah, that's a bunch of other fun stuff. I don't know how much you actually read in the C-sharp book, but you can get into pretty deep on those things. What did I respond to? A survey for, oh, for Visual Studio. Debugging performance. I didn't even know it loaded that. That's fun. All right. Cool. So we got our collisions working there. That seemed to be pretty good. Um, I think the only thing that we're running into now is that it doesn't seem like the ball actually shows up initially. It seems like every time it's too dark for some reason. I think we're picking that random color when we make the ball. We pick a random color. We don't do that, though. Um, Where's when we make the ball? Let's see. Let's go to our ball constructor. Yes, we never set color, I think is why. So we should change color randomly in the constructor so we're not getting the defaults of zero or black. I think black's probably the default one here. So we'll change the color randomly. Now we should get a different starting color here. Let's see what we get. Yeah, okay, cool. Awesome. And then it'd be nice if that um, ellipse was filled, right? Instead of just being the, the outer line. So let's see if we can fix that. So that's our draw for ball. We draw ellipse. Do we have another option here? What do we get? Stroke width. What else do we get here? Stroke width. Geometry, stroke style. Style, stroke width, stroke width. No, why is there no like filled solid? Let's, let's just Google it. So animated canvas um, solid ellipse. Canvas rendering context. Xy radius. No, that doesn't seem right. Fill? I don't know. Uh, so it's not C sharp. Fill. Canvas. Draw ellipse. We can't search. Add ellipse portion within the canvas. Set. No, that's what we want. Fill ellipse method. Oh, is that it? Instead of draw ellipse, is it fill ellipse? Fill ellipse. It's a different method. That's funny. So it's not an argument. It's just a whole different method there. Let's see if that one's any better for us. Oh, yep. Oh, rip. Thank you. Now, should our walls also be filled then, right? Instead of draw line, can be fill line? Oh, there's no fill line. There's a fill rectangle. Uh, fill rectangle. But now it doesn't like the X, Y. Okay, that's all right. And the color and the width. Maybe draw line is fine. We'll leave that at draw line. We can always come back to that. All right. Let's just see if we get the solid color ball. Come on. There. Look at that. We should be able to increase the speed. Oh, we missed though. Game over. All right. So I mean to fix the collisions. We'll do, we'll fix the collisions and then we'll take a break. Does that sound good? Or do you want to take a break now and then come back? It's already after seven. All right. Someone said break. So first person who talks gets to win. Um, so we'll take 10. We'll come back. We'll fix the collisions and then we'll look at images. And I'll show you multiple pages as well. So we can have some options how we start the game versus a one player versus a two player, uh, whatever other nonsense we want here. Okay.
we'll have some fun. So we'll take 10, we'll come back a little bit.
There you go. That's a that's a thing. Sure. All right. So welcome on back. So let's uh, let's actually look at other pages here. How we can launch different XAML pages here, so we can kind of turn this into more of a game. Because one of the things you need to do is have your credits page, your instructions page, right? I think I mentioned that. Let's uh, double check. Sometimes I they say things and I forget that I said the things. So it's always good to make sure it's written down. Wait, uh, did I not say that? I talked about it. It's not in here. Okay, that's fine. Um, we should still do it anyway. No, no, credits. Yeah, yeah, directions and credits. I can't read, friends. I need more coffee. Yeah, so multiple pages, including directions and credits. Let's talk about that first, because this is an easy first start. You can get a couple pages going that don't really have functionality yet. And this idea that we're going to have a lot of commits throughout the month here. Um, that's an easy thing. Like, hey, let's commit a page. And now there's we're doing some work here, right? Um, kind of getting that through. So now we've got the, the the main page here is really the game page. So this is not what we really want as the starting page. So we'll fix that in a minute. So I'm going to come to my project. I want to add a new item. I want to add a new XAML page. Here's my no XAML. Okay, here we go. XAML. I want a new XAML view. Okay, main page one. That's a fantastic name for this thing. That's not great. And then we need to change the scaling on it, right? So this one was scaled for Xbox. This one's scaled for Xbox. Okay, this one is scaled for Xbox. Good. Is that just really big? I zoomed in a lot, aren't I? It's hard to see. Got a question? Uh, yeah, when you get a chance, can you show how to make the events happen? So, yeah, if you want a timed based event, so probably the easiest way to do that, I mean, we could set up separate timers and threads and things and have weights, but um, essentially our update method here is getting called 60 times a second. So, if we come off of this here um, and we keep a method running, so let's count here, let's just do uh, private int, uh, I should make this a long, this is ticks here. So this will be like how many ticks have happened essentially um, since this is this started, ticks equals zero. And then in our draw, so let's add that in here. So we'll draw another canvas.draw text. We'll say ticks. And we can increase ticks right in here. It's not necessarily the, the best thing to do here, but this should be okay. Let's go 300. Oh my goodness, 300. Uh, let's do like 650. And colors.white. And then in here, we could go also go reset it, right? So we can say something like, we'll, we'll figure out how long this takes. So I'm expecting 60 ticks or so to be about a second. We'll see if that's close, right? When we give this a run. I think that's probably your easiest bet, is to go for that instead of a separate timer. Come on. One, two, three, four. Uh, so about 60 ticks a second seems pretty pretty close here. Um, so I would go off of that, and then you can just reset your tick count. Um, so like once it hits a certain value, uh, where, I don't know where I have my ticks. Uh, here. So at some point in here, probably you probably want to do that in your update, not the draw. You can say, hey, if the tick value is a certain number, do some method, and then put ticks back to zero. Like if you want it to happen every eight seconds constantly, like once I get my ticks to, what, four, is that 480 or so, do this thing and then put ticks back to zero. And then ticks can just keep on increasing as you go here. Um, so you say this is about 60th of a second per tick. And again, it's not going to be exactly perfect here because 
things take some time. So if you have a very complex game, you might be getting less than 1 60th of a second. Or it might be a little slower than that. We're not going to do anything crazy. I imagine, don't imagine we're going to do anything super crazy where you're never going to like get down to 20 frames per second or something because we're not doing any sort of intense 3D modeling and rendering and graphic, like calculation sort of stuff. So I imagine this will be pretty consistent for you because most of our games will be pretty basic. But if you've got like 50,000 things on the screen that need to be animated, it might take a little bit of time, right? So just, just keep that in mind um, for what you got there. All right, so then our, our main page here, I'm going to rename this here. And we'll call this the uh, menu here, because really we want this to be the menu page. Let's see if we can't open that up. I broke it. Where's my design view? Did renaming it really break it on me? That's sad. Come on. There's no nothing? OK, sure. I drag my button in. <laughs> Where's the design view? Let me close it and try and reopen it. There it goes. Okay. That was fun. Why not? All right. So we grab a button here and we'll drag this one in. And then I'll drag another button in. And we'll put this one in here. Just to have some to start here. So with two different buttons. So one will be. So uh, zoom this in a little bit more so we can see better. How about credits? Right? And then when we click this button, we want something to happen. Oh, wow. Reload the designer. Credits. Nope. Okay. It's all right. We can make this work. Let's come to our events. Oh, the document has no code behind file. Add a code behind file in the class definition before adding event handlers. Look at that. Now that's a helpful message. That's a helpful message. So let's add code behind. No, how do I add my code behind? That's interesting. Wow. All right. Let's just try it and see what we get. So let's add a new item here. Was blank page what I wanted then instead of a view? Maybe it was a blank page. Yep, blank page is what I wanted. Okay, there we go. We did not want a, I'm sorry, we wanted a blank page. Let's rename this one here to menu. Okay. There we go. Now we can have some code behind. So we'll drive our buttons in here again. Buttons and buttons. Oh, this one, credits. Okay, now we get a button click. So what we want is we want the menu page to start, right? And then we want this, this one to be on this button click, when that button clicks, on this one to be named play game, right? And this one to be named credits. We'll have different handlers for those when we load them. Oh, maybe we rename these things. So this one was, this should be my credits button, vector properties. Content, where's my, wow, name, here, credits button. And this is my play game button. All right, so now we got some names. Ah, that's fine. But we should rename these. These are these are going to be ugly here. So this is the credits button click, and this is the play game button click. Okay. So to navigate to other screens here, so we want we want this one to be the start. So in our app um, XAML, this one starts us off. So when it launches, it's going to go find the main page. And this sets that as the root frame and it navigates to it. This triggers all of the stuff that says, hey, let's go ahead and take my frame that we're looking at, here's the window here, and go to this new view here. So instead of main page, we want this to be the menu. Did not 
menu not compile? Why? Let me try, maybe menu is the wrong name for that. How about menu page? Nope. Menu. You broke it. That's awesome. All right, let me put it back for a second. Main page. Main page class. This is public. Is this one not public? It's public. Oh, it's named blank page. Okay, so this, so when I renamed the file, it didn't rename the class. I did a bad thing there. So this is my um, menu page here. There we go. Now we can come back to our apps YAML here. Now we should be able to do our menu page. There we go. So names are important. You got to get this right. So what's interesting though is it's doing a type of menu page. It's not doing a new menu page. It's not so. It's getting this kind of this through this idea of reflection. It's saying, hey, what type is this in the code here? And it will then the navigate function takes a type, not an instance of anything, just the specific type, and it does its magic to create an instance of that type behind the scenes for us. So it does some fun things here. And then you can pass arguments, which is the fun thing. That's what we're going to look at when we start really navigating around. So if I want my game to be a one-player game or a two-player game, I can pass that as an argument. Right, and I can look for those arguments as we go. <clears throat> Excuse me. So we should be able to now launch out our menu page. And it's not going to do anything yet, but now my program should start on a different page if we did this right. I get the menu page again, right? They don't do anything yet, but we'll, we'll get them to do things in a minute here, right? So let's do another page here. Let's add a new item on a blank page. That's the right one here. And then we want, let's name it right the first time. So let's be the credits page here. On the credits page, we'll just add in some text and a button. Um, about this is the home button. And its text can be home. I don't know. Like go back to the home page or something. Then we put a label in here. Text. We can put text in here. Text block. There we go. Nope. That's not what I wanted. Didn't want that. Don't want the event handler. <laughs> well, clicked it. Uh, you got to take the event handler out here, and then I can go get rid of the method. And if I just delete it first, it's going to be upset with design view. All right, so credits page. Let's change the text here. Um, amazing song by Eric. Sure. And when I click home, we want to go back to the home page. So from the menu page on our code behind here, when we click the credits button, we want to navigate to the credits page. And we kind of see a little bit of that in our app XAML here. It takes the root frame here. So we need to get the frame. And then we're going to call navigate if it's not null, right? So we can I think we can keep most of this here and steal it. Let's see. Go to our menu page. So get the frame. This is the root frame. And then we want to navigate. What's this E? Unlaunched. I don't think we want the unlaunched, so we won't have any unlaunched arguments here. That'll be okay. So navigate type of credits page. And we don't need to give it any arguments. I think we can just say navigate. We don't need to tell it anything special here. And then from the credits page, when I click the home button, we want to navigate back to the um, was it menu page. Menu page. So we should be able to flip back and forth. Let's see if it works.
Credits. Amazing Pong by Eric. Home. Credits. Amazing Pong. Credits. Home. Yeah, that even like kind of like bounces in. That's a cool little uh, transition there. Well, you didn't even set that. Now, play game doesn't do anything, but we can fix that, right? So now on our play game, we want to get the frame, navigate to, this is the main page here. And let's actually rename this one here. So let's see if we can rename the code first. So F2 is the refactor. I'm sorry. So uh, if you right-click rename or F2 is the refactor here, let's call this the game page. And then let's rename the file here to game page. Game page. Okay. So then I think that should have renamed it everywhere. Yep, it renamed it everywhere for us. Fantastic. So we can launch the game page, navigate to the game page. Now we don't have a way to go back home yet once the game ends. So we can add a button in a little bit here for that. So we should be able to go to our game and play our game. And we can even like on game over just automatically take them back, but usually people will like want to see something or click or like you could wait a little while or we got options here for how we want to manage that. Okay, so let's see if we can't do this navigate though and look at what else can we pass here. So come on, navigate. Give us, give us two overloads. Come on. Here we go. So one just takes the frame, one takes the frame and an object as a parameter, and another takes an object parameter and a transition info, if you want to give it specific transition info. So I think we can just pass an object here as the parameter, right? I don't know, let's just pass test. Testing. Hello, credits page. Sure. So when we navigate, then we need a way to get this argument out. So on our credits page here, when it gets created, we need to look for those arguments. And I honestly, I don't remember. I'm going to go Google this real quick. So XAML, navigate, pass arguments. Which means XAML pages. So is this the hit here? Navigate, pass parameters. Navigation event on navigated from. That we're doing here? Passing objects, query string, on navigated event, value to be passed, page load event. So you get a routed event args. That seemed right. I'll generate the function. The start point, what is the value to be passed? That's the value to be passed. I think we can get that, so on page load. So let's take a look at our on page load. This here's our page, we should get uh, page load here, right? Here's our page load. There's an event in here somewhere, isn't there? Pages, property window, events, loaded. Oh, the loaded event. You see loaded? There's loaded. All right, so when the grid gets loaded, let's see if we can get those event arms, maybe. E dot. Two string? Sure. Let's see what we get here for our routed event arcs. We'll put a breakpoint here. See what we can't find. And then, so we've got some text here on our credits page, right? Don't we have a, a text block? We've got our, I don't think we ever named the text block, did we? So we, we have to give this a name. Amazing Palm by Eric. This is the credits text block. Okay. And then maybe we can take our credits text block. Credits text block text uh, plus equals. I don't know, let's just do E2 string. See what we get here. Might be a little fun.
I think we could pass it, right? To get the... Please work in ATM code. <laughs> nice. That's a, that's, a, that's a real comment there. Let's see if we can go to credits. Okay. Do we have any event arcs? What do we have in here? Static members? Is there anything in here? Doesn't look like there's a lot of info here. What do we get from sender? Sender was the grid. That's not us. I think E is not going to work for us. Yeah, just route as event art. Oh, goodness. Okay. That's obnoxious. Pass the object. Navigate the user constructor. Okay. Or a public property. Destination page. On navigated from. I don't think we want that. Navigation context, restrain, try get value. Oh, that seems like it's obnoxious too. I did this before. Hang on. I'll go back to my example. I think I've got it in here. Let's see. It's one of these here. Not the pong one, but the uh, game page. No? Did I not pass any args? Thought I did. Uh, that's the app example. That's probably not that one. What's my other page? The title page? Unnavigated to. Ah. Okay. Maybe that was it. Let's see if that works for us. All right, so let's get rid of that grid loaded nonsense then. Can't trust everything you find on the internet. It's a shame. Delete. Paste in override. Navigation event args is a parameter. This is our credits. Text block dot text plus equals. And then how about like a new line? Plus that. Let's see if that works for us. That's when we navigate to title page, right? So let's see, can I find more title page? Title page, yeah, here for e arguments. Is that gonna work for us? Let's see. Credits. Hello, credits page. Hello. All right, awesome. So we're able to pass some arguments. Just doing some manual casting here with that event. So that's one option here. Not the worst. Um, trying to create like a new page like it was doing and using a constructor is another option. Um, that might be a little nicer to, to take that in a constructor. Um, if that worked, I think this was one of the suggestions here, right? You say, hey, you want your page to take a constructor. And then you can give that page um, this, which one? This one here, right? Passing a value to the page constructor. You might be able to do that. Uh, but then you, you know, is that easier than this one? Should we try it the other way? Should we try that? So if we have our credits page, take a string, string for arguments, string args, uh, we'll say it equals uh, just empty as a default here, in case you don't want to give it one here. So it has to happen after initialize components, right? Because initialize components actually creates all the objects first. But if we try and interact with this credits text block, it won't work for us. Right, so after we've initialized, then we can go add this in here. So this will be my args. We'll add in the args here. So we go and go to our credits here from our main page. Then, so instead of type of, so navigate, does this let us do another frame.navigate the new credits page? Test arg. Nope, that one doesn't even let us do that. The system type. So how did they navigate here? Page navigation service. Dot navigation service. 
Oh dear. Navigate. Maybe that's why we didn't do it that way. I don't think we had lots of options for that one. So it looks like we're stuck with that one. I thought there was a way to do it, but that's okay. As long as we can get it to work, I think that'll be okay. So we'll go back and forget that. We'll take that out of our credits page, right? All right. So if we wanted to pass info to the game here then, so let's go back to Pong. And this is the Pong class itself that my game page goes and loads. So Pong, so take an image here, let's take a Boolean for demo mode. And we'll say equals false uh, to start here. And we'll have an option for uh, demo mode. So let's add a private demo mode. Demo mode equals demo mode. Oops, this demo mode. Uh, private boolean. So when the game is playing, then we want, if we're in demo mode, to do the exact same thing with the player paddle and the computer paddle. We want to override the player's controls. Because in demo mode, it's just going to play itself. So we can just like leave it up on the screen. I could have this running in the game lab, and everyone would walk in and be so amazed at how pretty, like, someone put a Pong game on Xbox and it'd be blown away, right? Super impressive. We should have it like when we bring undergrads in, or prospective undergrads in, to like see what kind of cool research we do here. They can see Pong on the Xbox. There's a bunch of sports happening right now. Yeah. I, I met your um, dean of students. Um, we were, I was walking out of the, the UC and she had her son with him because it's spring break week and apparently childcare fell through. So it was her turn to have him for the afternoon. But he had a really cool Mario backpack on. I was like, hey, kid, I like your backpack. He's like, thanks. And they're like, we started talking the whole way. But weirdly, she's got a really good memory. Um, I had emailed her years ago, so back in 2020, when the COVID lockdown stuff happened and no one knew what was going on, uh, the campus pivoted. I had a, a student who was living over at the Union get COVID. And I was like, oh, crap, I don't know what to do. Um, and so like we were talking back and forth, and they needed, of all things, toilet paper. And if you have COVID, they were tested positive for COVID. They're like, well, I'm not supposed to leave. I don't know how to get toilet paper. So like I emailed the Dean of Students because she put out like, hey, let us know if students need something. So she remembered my name and that she had to go find toilet paper for the student living over the union. Like, but all I said was, oh, hi, I'm Eric Chinesky. Uh, and the kid was asking like, what, what, are you a student here? Which made me feel really good because I'm 35. <laughs> like, yes, I look young. Uh, but no, I was like, no, I'm one of the teachers here. He's like, oh, that's cool. It's like, oh, I'm Eric Chinesky. And she remembered that. So she's got a good memory. For that whole story. Uh, yeah, I guess. I mean, I'm terrible with names and faces. So, but yeah, that's true. So, S S T R. I don't know how you say your name. Struvkt. Um, I guess it is probably the kind of story you don't forget. Like, of all the things like you'd expect to be doing as the dean of students, uh, arranging for toilet paper delivery, probably not one of them. But, you know, that's what it was. So. All right, so if we're in demo mode, then we want to be able to move our paddle around as we go. So we'll say if demo mode is true, then, right, we'll do this with the player paddle. Player paddle X. We'll move the player paddle. If it's not demo mode, we don't care. Nothing else happens. It will work as usual, right? And... That should be pretty good. So we need a way now to tell the Pong game whether or not we're in demo mode. So on our game page, where's, where's our credits page? I've got too many of these open here now. I'm sorry. Let's steal the on navigated to, and we'll drop this into our game page on navigated to. So let's get the parameter. So if there's a parameter, we want to go do something, right? So We've got this Pong class here. Where does Pong get created? So Pong, Pong equals new Pong and create resources. Hmm. Async. That might be fun, but we'll uh, we'll change all this because we'll, we'll come back to all this stuff here. We can fix that later. So in our constructor, we'll say Pong equals new Pong. 
and then we'll need to go set that. So I guess as the constructor value is probably not where we want it here for our Pong game here. So let's take that out of the constructor. Let's just make this a property maybe. Public demo mode, get and set. So we can go and set that value. So then we'll take our demo mode. Yeah, we don't even need to pass it in here. We can get rid of all that nonsense. So we probably want demo mode to be false to start. We'll assume it's false to start, but I can go change the property later. Right? Your constructor's job is to give your attributes values. So let's make sure we're doing that. But then we can go in here and say, hey, if we got those navigation properties, so if, um, what is it done? Boolean of E, oh. Boolean of E, my goodness, Boolean demo mode equals casting Boolean of an E. Uh, can't convert. What did I do? I did this wrong. String? Oh, E dot parameter. That's right. E dot parameter. We'll cast the parameters of Boolean. And then if demo mode is not null, we'll take our Pong game and we will call the demo mode, set it to demo mode. Right? Uh, what does it want here? What does it want to do? The result of the expression is always true since value type of boolean is never equal to null because I cast it. Oh, okay. So we need to say if demo mode. Oh, okay, I guess we just set the demo mode because it, it should default to false then. Sure, why not? All right, so then on our menu page then, when we want to play the game, then we'll pass in a false for regular mode. So maybe we need two buttons here then, right? On our main page, menu page. Come on, come back, design view. Come back to me. There it goes. So this will be play game, and then we'll have another button here then, right? For demo mode. Demo mode button. Name here, my text. The demo mode. And when you click this guy, you should get this one. I know you guys are so excited. I'm sorry. True. Demo mode is true. Let's see if it defaults to false for us. I think it's never used. There's some reference to it, isn't there? I think it's just confused. Menu page. Let's try it and see. Oh, wow. Demo mode. Oh, demo mode. There we go. Oops. You can't compile with red lines. Red lines make you sad. Let's see what we get here. All right, so let's try play game. Oh, see? Crashed. See, that's okay. Object reference not set to an instance. No event arg. All right, so maybe we can say if e is not null or e dot parameter, parameter, maybe e parameter is not null. Then we'll go do this thing. How about that? I guess really we just set it to that, then we can save ourselves a line. Now, don't tell me you can save two lines of code by getting rid of those curly braces, because we always use our curly braces as their if statements, right? Because we're good people. Some, some people... Some people don't like them there. Uh, and sure, you know, if they're going to sign your paycheck, you can follow their style guidelines. That's perfectly fair. Um, you can just pry on the inside because it's ugly. Play game. All right. So we're in control here. Awesome. Awesome. Oh, I never put in the home. Let's go. Let's add a home button here. Let's go back to our game page. I have too many of these open again here. Game page, XAML. Reload the designer. Oh, come on. Reload. What? Come on. I've... 
I don't know what this is. What did I break? All right, we broke all of them. None of them are showing now. That's awesome. None of them. Game page. Now, okay, there we go. There we go. Canvas animated control. It could not be displayed. Uh, oh, I changed. I changed an option here, didn't I? Oops. Wonder if I can drag a button in here. You know, let, let's just do this. Let's go to our game page. And where do we have the game over? Right, we've got a game over option here. Where else is game over in our code? Oh, we got a game over, right? Game over. Game over false. Or if, if not game over for the collidable stuff, game over. All right, so if that's an update. I don't think we ought to put the button there, do we? We just send them back home after this if game is over. So if the night game is not over, then else um, we can do this, the whole navigate thing. So maybe we wait a minute. I don't know. That's okay. So we'll just uh, we'll just go do that. So where's our uh, where are we doing that in our menu page? That's probably a good one to steal. Navigate to game page. Sure. Where'd it go? Game page, oh, Pong class. Oh, no, so this one has to do it here. That's right, so it has to happen. It won't be in the Pong class. It'll be in the game page enamel on our update method here. We can probably go do that. So on update, so we can say if Pong.gameOver, or no, is game, game over? Is that a public property of Pong? Game over. Game over. It's private. Oh shoot! Let's make that a public Boolean game over with public get private set. How about that? So I can't change that from outside. I can go get get access to it here. Oops. Uh, we'll go refactor, rename that. That'll fit for properties. Okay. So if it's game over, then if it's game over, we can go and navigate to the menu page. So sure. It might be a little jarring, but we'll probably be okay. That way, at least it'll take us back to the, the menu. All right, so we'll play the game. So if we lose, it should take us back to the menu page. Oh, uh-oh. Root frame failed on Canvas update. Window current context. Got null. Well, that's no fun. Hmm. Oh, so inside of update, that's why. So update doesn't have, it's it's not the same as the rest of these. Um, shoot, okay. All right, we can make that work. So if the game is over, we want to go do something. What do we want to do here? So let's go add a maybe a button here. Uh, button, home button or something. Let's see if we can do this. Private button. Home button, reinitialize, home button, the new button. What do we need to give button here? Sure, button. And home button dot. Where can we put all these things here then? Visible? Visibility? Disable? Show? Oh, goodness. UI is not visible. Enable. So enabled is usually like if it's 
dithered on or not, right? If, if you can activate this. We want it to just not even show, maybe? I guess we could have it enabled or not. Um, set it to false. And then home button dot text. No, nope, content. Then equals home, the home menu. Sure, menu. That's fine. And then we can add in our own click event. So doing this by hand, right, is kind of what this stuff that was auto generated for us was doing. But now we can kind of control it. I don't know if we want to control it. it might be a little nicer here. So I can say my home button dot is it? Um, no. Clicked. Clicked plus equals. And we have to give it, right, this is a listener here, so we can give it one of these events here. So we want a void home button clicked. And what is that even going to look like? I forget. We get our, we get a button in here. Just maybe we can drag one in here. There we go. We'll just steal that one. Oh, we'll just take button click. There we go. Button click. So if the game is over, we'll enable that to true. Enabled. Enabled, it's true. And then when that button's clicked, then we want to navigate. And that should let us navigate. So we should have access to the frame from here. Oh, I left that other button on the screen. Shoot. That's probably okay. We'll see. See where it goes. Come on. Yeah, the other button's not even showing. Shoot. Uh oh. I handled the exception. Oh, the the whole update thread is really screwy because uh, it's like a, it's a separate thread that's running. Why is this not working for me? Maybe we're not going to be allowed to do that. On update, yeah. No, sorry. I'll have to. We'll just leave the button there then. That's fine. It's gonna be ugly. We'll we'll find a way to make it nicer a little bit later. There's that button. Put it down here or something. And then I'll just one home menu. Did I even add the right code to it? I don't even think I added the right code to it, right? We want to navigate. Yeah, menu page. Okay, let's gonna to go to menu. That's good. All right, so we'll play. That's kind of close. It's kind of in the way, but we can move it later, a little farther down. But that should take me back to the menu. Demo mode now. My paddle's moving automatically. That's what we wanted. Now we can just sit and watch Pong play, and we can increase the speed. We never did the other collision bit, did we? That's the other piece we have to fix. We can watch it play. Oh, pause. All right. Go back to the menu. Go to our credits. Right, go home. So we navigate around now. At least it's a little clunky here, but it some, sort of works. We need to fix our collisions, though. So now for collisions, we want to see based on the ball speed. Here then, so as we're checking for all these collisions, so if we're colliding, then um, so this is all needs to be based on our speed. So if this value collides, right, or or within the range of, so we kind of need to be able to give all these ranges. Is a little bit of a problem here. So maybe we give it a uh, int speed 
default to one. So all these will still work without any speed given in, but now I can go and fix them here in a minute. So it will default nothing. Uh, we'll take them out, I guess. As this will highlight everything red now that I need to fix. So go back to Pong. We should get a bunch of red here. There we go. So collide left, given a speed. Int speed. Int speed. Int speed. Int speed. Okay. And for the paddle, same thing here for its collisions. Speed, 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 and speed. All right. Now we actually call collides here. Now we can give it the ball speed. Uh, ball dot speed. And pass it in all of these. All right. So we need to actually fix that logic though in here now. Uh, go to our implementation for the wall. Oh, we have to fix this for the wall and the panel? Oh, goodness. That's no fun. So given the speed then, right, so if we know how fast the ball is traveling, then we want if the x, now if we're going to collide with the left edge of something, we should be traveling to the right. So whatever the speed is, we're going to be further that distance. So x, uh, we can say plus the speed, now is going to be greater than or equal to my x of 0. So where I am, plus how far I'm going to go in the next update here, if that gets to my left edge or further, I want to say I collide it, right? Now, it's possible you might miss it, though. So this works for walls, right? Because you you're, should never be able to get on the wrong side of the wall. For the bricks, we're going to have to fix, or the paddle, we're going to have to fix in a little bit. So we can figure that out in a little while. So for the right edge, then it's going to be, should be traveling to the left, will be the ball x minus the speed is less than or equal to my x1 plus the width. And then for the top edge, it should be the y, y movement then. So my y minus the uh, top edge will be plus the speed, right? Because this is coming down, hitting my top edge. So plus the speed then should be greater than or equal to y1. And then hit my bottom edge, it should be going up. So it should be its y um, why did I add the width there? It seems like the wrong spot for the width. That should be y minus the speed is greater than or equal to, I'm sorry, less than or equal to my y plus the width. Right, so where my y is plus how wide it is. Right, I think, is that right for width? Width is always three when I draw these things. Yeah, I think, I think that ought to do it. So let's give that a shot. See, so as we increase the speed, it should be predicting if that next update is going to hit or not, because we don't want to go past the wall and then say we bounced. So we need to be looking at where we're going in the next distance. All right, so let's play. Nope. Yeah, it sure went just right past it, didn't it? And it was constantly. Um, oh, because it's checking all. Of, okay, so we're, we need to check to make sure we're within range as well. So this. Um, oh, goodness. X plus the speed is greater than or equal to. Right. And. I think the, I think we can do the regional X. Um, because it was saying that the x plus the speed is always going to be greater than there. So we need to be close enough or moving in. Right, so close enough to hit it. Um, so I, th I think we want plus the speed is less than or equal to x of o. So where we're going is at my left edge. Right. So this should be we've hit it or we've gone past it. No, shoot, that's not right. How do we do this before? 
Yeah, because we want it, it needs to be hitting it or equal to. Did it just be x plus b that equals x and zero? It, we don't. We might go past it. Is the problem because as we are as we're moving like ten pixels at a time with really fast speed, we're never guaranteed to be exactly equal. So we want where we are now plus that distance has to hit the wall. Um, yeah. What's the what do we need here? So oops, uh, x zero. And okay, all of that one. Get away. So the X has to be at the wall or hitting it. I think. And my X is greater than or equal to. Oh my goodness, it's not in my head right now. <laughs> yeah, to, to see on a on the left edge. Because we want to say we're either at it or about to hit it. So the at it would equal and about to hit it is past it. But if we're way further, right, then we don't it shouldn't matter. How are we close enough to it? I think I think we can say x x of zero minus x is greater than or equal to the speed. Is that so? It's left edge minus where we are has to be greater than or equal to the speed. So if it's like if your x is at 10 and the wall is at 700, 700 minus 10 is not going to be greater than your speed. I think that'll be okay. Let's try that. And then Clyde's on the right edge. Um, plus the width. So then your x of 1 plus the width minus the x to Clyde on the right then. So how... How far away is that greater than or equal to the speed? I'm going to mix up with my less than and greater than's now. So for colliding on the right edge, we're traveling to the left. So it'll be my distance away from the x1 plus the width. It should be fine. If that's greater than or equal to the speed. That might work. Let's try those. I don't know if it's going to work or not. Come on. We can we can ask chat GPT while we're waiting. Nope. Oh, I can't get there in time. So it keeps constantly colliding left and right. Okay, that was no good. Given a circle with center of x and y and a radius, I'd probably just do rectangle, right? But that's fine. Um, you um, and a speed. X. I don't know. Given a circle, I'll use for x, y, radius, and speed. You determine. It. There we go. I'm given a moving circle. Which sure will collide with a wall with values for x, x0, x1, y0, y1, and width. Let's see if I can do it. Chat probably can.
Oh, you calculate both. That's right. Look at that. There we go. So my x of the circle minus the xo, absolute value of that, minus the radius. x is the circle's x coordinate, x is the absolute value of x. If the distance between the circle's current position and the wall is less than or equal to the zero, the circle is already colliding with the wall. If the distance between the circle's next position and the wall is less than or equal to zero, the circle will collide with the wall during its movement. This team right? So the x minus x absolute value minus the radius is the distance. And if the distance is less than or equal to zero. Okay. All right, let's try that. Let's try that. My goodness. So we need was it math dot absolute value of x minus xo. We don't have the radius though, do we? Because we weren't past the radius for this collision. We know what it is, right? We can hard code it. That feels a little bad here because radius was 10? I think radius was 10, right? Yeah, radius was 10. My goodness. So if the absolute value of x minus that minus 10 is less than or equal to zero. That's not right. Is that what it was telling us? So if where the where the ball is minus where the wall is, absolute value of that, minus 10 is less than or equal to zero. We're going to collide. That's on our left edge, right? And then our right edge. Oh, wait, this doesn't even account for speed, though. Shoot. Because we also need the speed. This isn't factoring in the speed anywhere, right? Oh, this is its current position and its next position. Okay, just adding its speed. Okay, so we'll just add the speed. So x, so on the left edge, we're traveling to the right, so plus speed. And then traveling on the right edge will be x minus speed. And then this will be plus the width, I think. Right. And then tension, maybe you should make that radius. It's like, I don't know how to get that right. That's fine. We can make that constant later. So if my movement, my location plus my speed, minus where that is, minus 10 is less than zero. Okay. Let's try that. Oh my goodness, that's after eight already. We've been having fun. Let's see if we can get this going. Play the game. Oh, okay. Bounced maybe a little early, but that's okay, right? Not too bad. Let's increase the speed. Make sure we can still get bouncing right and left. Oh, okay. It got stuck on my paddle. My paddle, we didn't fix the paddle bounces, so that's okay. Let's go back to demo mode. Increase the speed. Right bounce, left bounce. Looks like it's bouncing a little too soon. Right? Does it seem like it's a little bit too soon? It's close. It's a couple, couple pixels off, right? Slow it down. Let's watch it. That one, yeah, that, that was kind of far, right? Let's go. It's a little early. Is it maybe we need to do like half the radius? I don't know. Let's see that. Let's see if that's any better. This is why you need to be good at math. To do this stuff by hand. Let's see. And this is nice. So demo mode, I don't have to move the paddle because the paddle doesn't move fast enough. Because we only move the paddle one pixel at a time. 
you didn't have a speed for the paddle. All right, that looks a little bit better. I thought we did. Let's just try. Forget the radius. Um, is that what it is? Because we're, as we're moving to the left, to the left edge, we're moving in that direction. For the the right edge, we're moving to the left. So we subtracted speed versus adding speed. I don't know. Let's try it with no adding the radius. Do we get? We want the game to be pretty, right? We don't even we embarrassed by this. Let's see. Well, it's it's also function, right? When it's pretty. All right, that looked like a pretty good bounce. Let's slow it down to just one pixel at a time. Yeah, that okay. So I don't know why we didn't have to do the radius. Oh, we missed it though. Now totally missed. I wouldn't have picked that up. How could it have missed? So that would have been minus the speed. Minus, oh, this plus the width. I think I screwed that up. Because this should be the actual right edge of it, right? And we were adding it to the end. I think that's it. So my x minus where I'm going. Minus that value, my x plus where I'm going. Well, no, because now we're subtracting a, uh, a bigger number. Right before that, I was I'm subtracting a larger number now. Before I was adding something after. Mm -hmm. Okay. You still broke it. It seems like it's going okay, though, right? Nope. <laughs> Seemed like it for a minute there. Plus my speed minus the x is less than or equal to zero. So if we're going too far past, it won't be less than zero, right? Yeah, this doesn't this doesn't work. We're going too fast. It's like if we're at 780 and we're 789 and we have 10 more pixels, minus 790, that's positive nine. Okay, that's not a, a less than zero. Maybe do I want x the distance between us? Minus the speed, and then how about the distance between us plus the speed? Oh, shoot, I don't want plus though, because that's that's not going to do it. Minus the speed. So how far away am I? Minus how fast I'm going. How far am I? Minus how fast I'm going. I'm just making it up right now. Because if I get within my speed distance, right, I should be bouncing. I think that might be it. If not, we'll give up after this. We can always fix it later. All right, that one looked okay. Slow down for a single pixel bounce. That one looked good. Oh, that was a good bounce, right? I'll speed it up a little bit. Bounce. Bounce. Okay, I think that was it, right? Because we need to, because we did the absolute value of the distance, and then we should be subtracting the speed because we want is to see if we're less than or equal to zero, to see if we're hitting or not. Does that make sense? We should be able to speed it up even more. Oh, the the paddle breaks. Okay, sometimes the paddle breaks. We didn't fix the paddle logic. I forgot. The the walls were fine, but it the Panel logic we never fixed up here because it was separate. We didn't like use the same methods very well here. Yep. Yeah. So it just lost that one. Okay. 
they're pretty close. So the top edge we can fix up. It's not going to be. We'll come back to those. And then for the paddle collisions, we have to fix these as well. So we'll fix these. Do fix paddle collisions. And then we need the top and bottom shouldn't matter for the wall because we don't actually care because you'll never hit the top and bottom of the wall, I think. Why yeah. the right and bottom? Uh, because the X value is the top left edge. So when we're looking at if you're colliding on the left side of it here, oh, I'm sorry, the, the right side, that means you're coming at, so the X is here, and then it has three pixels of width, and we want to see do you hit the edge here where the three pixels of width is. Because we only have the X value, so it draws a line X plus width wide when it's drawing the wall. So like the, this draw line function for wall says, where's your starting X, where's your ending X, where's your starting Y, where's your ending Y, and then how wide do we draw? And we just use the same values for X and Y for these. Uh, so like when we make our walls, where do we make our walls? We said, here's the left edge is your starting X and, and ending X. Here's your top edge and your bottom edge. So the second x value, because it's a single line, we want it to be a straight line, x-wise. And then it just has a width. So we're not drawing a rectangle. We don't have the four edges. We have starting x, ending x, starting y, ending y to draw a singular line. Because I'm not using a rectangle at all. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I think a rectangle might be a little easier um, to draw sometimes. But for some reason, I picked line. All right. So we'll come back uh, next time we can finish up our collisions for the paddle bit here, and then we'll finish up bricks. Um, and we should be in pretty good shape. So in terms of getting stuff done for the project, <clears throat> right? multiple commits, group evals, easy. The game itself running with the Xbox controller. We've got logic for some Xbox controller handling in here already, like looking at the gamepad directions. Um, we'll use that, and but whatever makes sense for your game for that. Um, and then the game functionality itself, we've been working on, we did multiple XAML pages. So you should be getting there. Um, hopefully I've approved your team's idea. I'll make sure you get in a team and we can go from there, okay? Thanks folks, folks, it's been fun.